welcome back or if this is your first time welcome over I imagine if you are watching this video it's probably because you just bought one of these guns or you found one cheap on auction or you're considering purchasing one this gun really wasn't that great and many other guns did the exact same thing and they did it much better the fit and finish is tremendous it's smooth as butter as you can see this is a police buyback this particular Beretta Cougar is a 40 caliber is at the 8040 and this is the Model D which means it has no decocker, no safety and is a double action only trigger. So what I'd like to show you first is how to disengage the slide. See so there's, a, there's a spring loaded pin here. You take that pin, you rotate this I don't know, 45 degrees. Now with that, really all you have to do is a slight amount of pressure there, the whole thing comes apart. As you can see, you don't really see the very coarse tooling marks that you find in a lot of less expensive budget guns. One item that sets this gun apart from many others is that it has a rotating barrel versus the Browning style tilting barrel. The design on it is ingenious and operates proficiently. I love the fact that they have a steel guide rod and spring. Every piece of this is steel except for the alloy receiver. This particular model has the Trigicon night sights. It's old enough though that they are barely a faint glow in the dark. I've been having difficulty finding any magazines that are over 10 rounds and actually been having difficulty finding even the 10 round magazines at a decent price. Pro Mag makes a high capacity magazine, but I wouldn't trust Pro Mag for target practice. Well, now that I went on that rant, let me get back to what we're really here to see. You will read a lot of reviews on this and it tells you about the wonderful rotating barrel system and that the recoil is so much better mitigated and it's more straight back versus that back and downward motion that this thing just changes the whole world. It feels like a gun. When you shoot it, it kicks like a gun. When someone shoots this gun and they know that it has the rotating barrel versus the tilting barrel design and they're shooting this for the first time, they think, wow, this thing handles so much better or it handles just, there's something different about it. My theory is that this gun is different feeling because it is a different gun. I don't think it has anything to do with how the barrel rotates versus the browning tilting barrel. I think it's just that the gun is different. You have a high access anyway. I think it's horse. In the end, it has recoil. It's a heavy gun, so it absorbs the 40 recoil fairly well. It's a metal frame. This gun is well built. It's fun to shoot. I do like the fact that it is a metal frame. Not that I have anything against polymer guns. There is something about having a metal frame gun and it just feels right. Now to put this gun back together, it's not too bad. There's always time for lubrication. So I'm reassembling this. I'm gonna go through all the wear parts. I'm gonna put just a tiny, tiny, tiny drop. You wanna make sure the chamber is going towards the back of the slide. Make sure that this single barrel lug that is running parallel with the barrel. So I'm going to take that, make sure that's pointed down or towards the top of the slide. Put that in and that should just slide back and forth. Now you'll notice this other piece, it has this fancy little arrow on it. That means towards the front of the gun. You can technically, you could install this uh, backwards on it. It'll fit. It'll be self-correcting. You'll get the slide back on, but your barrel won't lock in place. This has a uh, hole through and through, just like a donut. Make sure that you take this dingus end right here, and that goes towards the back of the slide. And the flat end you want towards the front. As you can see on the frame, there's a little hole in there. The end goes into the hole. Now just follow the arrow. Make sure the flat end is out, your guide rod, and it should just attach on. That's all you gotta do. 
hold that together and slide it onto your gun. Okay, now I'm gonna tent this one-handed. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, it's just smooth as butter. That's just one thing that I love about this gun. Now, see that? That's not good, right? What are you gonna do? Push that barrel back into there. Then you pull back on this just slightly and you should be able to rotate that lever around 45 degrees until it locks into place. Look at that. That click is does not reset the trigger. The trigger resets almost all the way back out. That is, I would say, one of the big fatal flaws of this particular firearm. Does the trigger suck? Yes. Is it fit and finish impeccable? Yes. Is it a fun gun to shoot? Yes. Do I love it? Yes. Would I trade it? No. If you can find one of these cheap and you can have that opportunity to have it, I would jump on it all day, any day. Would I use this gun for my everyday carry? Probably not. Would I choose to carry this gun as a duty weapon? No, I would not. Would I trust it as a backup weapon? Yes, I would. But like I said, it is harder to shoot this particular gun accurately, and there are much better, inherently more accurate pistols out there. One other item, the factory mags that come with this are exceptional. The only downside is they are very low capacity. Unless you live in California, then they're perfect.